All right, so we're moving on to, I believe, video number four. Um, we'll be looking at raster data and how to import raster layers into QGIS. Um, and to, the, to do this, we're actually going to be looking at NDVI images that were captured by Sentinel-2 um, roughly a, about a year ago on some wheat. Um, so let's just get right on into it. What I have here is a field boundary of a wheat field back in 2019. Now let's go ahead and zoom to that layer. Same field that we've looked at in the past. Um, so we're just going to calculate or create an NDVI map for this field right at about, I believe it's right at jointing to when this NDVI image was captured. So first thing you need to do is download the satellite image and whatnot. If you don't know how to do that, um, I have some other videos on how to do that. <clears throat> but once it's downloaded, we can go ahead and bring it in. So we come up here to layer, um, add layer, go to add raster layer. And now we can go ahead and bring in our bands. Um, so if we go back here, I got the settle images in the QGIS introduction file. So see right here, we got Sentinel, uh, looks like April 26th of 19. So I renamed that just to keep it simple. So we go ahead and open that up and click through the files to get to our image, image, images, I should say. So in order to click, create an NDVI map, we need to have a red band and a near infrared band. Um, and this just so happens that it's band four and band eight. You can Google this and find out what the bands are for Sentinel. Um, but we'll go ahead and bring in band 4, which is red, 8, which is near infrared, hit open, and hit add. And what that does is just defaultly applies a black and white color scheme to the um, satellite tile. So we can see it covers, you know, about four counties or so. Um, I will go ahead and zoom back to <clears throat> our field boundary which is right here, this particular field. And what we need to do now is actually create our NDVI map. Now in ArcGIS Pro, you were able to just make a composite of these bands and then it would defaultly do everything for you. Um, in this case, we actually need to use Raster Calculator to create NDVI maps, which actually isn't too bad. Um, they actually have a default in there to create NDVI maps. So we just type in raster calculator over our, in our processing tools. Um, if you don't have these processing tools and you need to add this to your QGIS, you can easily do that by going to processing, clicking on this little toolbox button. Now go ahead and add that to um, your QGIS project. Um, by raster calculator, hit enter. Okay, just brought it up evidently. Um, let me retype this in. Oh, raster calculator. Sorry, that was that was a a final step in this process I was looking at. So there's a raster calculator, and we can see here we got our bands. So these are all, all of our usable layers to use in raster calculator. So if you had, um, let's say, some grid soil sample results and you had an interpolated map, that would be showing up here. You could do anything you wanted to in this little expression box down here. Um, but for this case, we're creating an NDVI map, and there's this predefined equations um, option here. So it's on NDVI. It's the only one that's available. I think you can you can add and make some different ones. Um, but for this, we're just going to use the NDVI one. Click Add, and then now it's asking us what our red band is. So we know this is band number four. And if we can't quite see everything, we can stretch this out a little bit. And now we can see that we got band 4, which is right here, and our near infrared band, which is band 8, right here. So we can go ahead and click OK. So that defaultly puts in our equation, which is near infrared minus red, all in parentheses, divided by, in parentheses again, near infrared plus red, all in parentheses. Um, but we're not quite done yet. Um, we need to give it a reference layer. So this reference layer is doing things like um, basically doing automatic extent if you want it to do it. Um, in this case, we're not going to do it because QGIS does not run quite as efficiently as some other softwares. 
and it'll take a decent amount of time to create an NDVI map of an entire satellite tile. Um, however, I could see this useful if you had some time on your hands and you just wanted to create NDVI TIFF files and save those to your computer instead of having to go through this process every single time you want a satellite image for a specific date. You could just tell your computer to make an NDVI map of the entire satellite tile, uh, wait for probably about 15-20 minutes for it to get done, and then save that as a TIFF file and then you'd, you'd never have to create another NDVI map um, on that specific date. Um, but if you're just doing it for one field, you probably don't want to do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give it a reference layer of just, let's just do band, um, band red. you do near infrared as well. Um, but it's essentially going to give us the same thing because they're both the same pixel size or cell size as well as the same extent. So click OK. Um, so our cell size, if it's at zero, it's going to reference this right here. And we're going to come down here in our output extent. So if we left this alone, it would defaultly calculate the entire satellite image and turn it into an NDVI map. But to speed things up here, we have our P70 boundary here. And we'll just come in here and use layer extent of our P70 field. So I just scrolled up and down. You can select different, different uh, layers. And if you want to see them all, and click the little down button. Click on the P70, click OK. And then I always like to give everything a um, coordinate system just to make sure we're on the same page. So in this case, I'm just going to give it WGS84. Um, if you wanted to, you could give it WGS UTM zone 14. Uh, we're just going to do WGS84 for, for this uh, exercise right here. So what it's going to do is create an NDVI map that is a square box around our field with these extents. Essentially, what's, what it's going to do, and it's going to process relatively quick. So there we are, we have our NDVI map, it's actually hidden underneath our bands. So um, this is your drawing order, so whatever's on top is going to be displayed first. Um, so right now we're displaying our near infrared band on top, so if we unclick that, unclick our red band, and now we have our NDVI map that's in a box around our field. Um, for some instances you could leave it as a box if you were just doing statistical analysis on it but if you're wanting to create a map to look at or for somebody else to look at it probably be good to go ahead and clip this to the field boundary so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that so we're going to go to clip raster raster by mask layer and it should be underneath this g doll function um, so go ahead and click on that what that's going to bring up is our input layer, which in this case is just named output. Um, I forgot to mention that um, QGIS will automatically defaultly make um, temporary layers. So this output layer is actually only saved just temporarily in this project. It's not actually on our hard drive of our computer. So if you want it to be there, um, you'd have to select um, where you want it to go and name it. Um, but in this case, we just got a temporary layer um, for just purposes of learning how to do stuff. So we got our output, which is our NDVI map, and we got our P70 as our mass layer. And we can just go ahead and leave everything else the same. Um, if you wanted to, you could make sure that's in WGS 1984 and go ahead and run it. And exit out of that. And now we have two outputs, so this is where it could be nice to name these. Um, but if we unclick, see this is our clipped one right here. So if you want to rename it so you do know what it is, you can come in here, right click and go to rename layer. And, oh, it's ready for me to type. So we'll just name it NDVI clip. Okay, so we have our NDVI clip. Let's go ahead and get rid of our other one so we don't get confused. And defaultly it's going to give us a nice black and white um, symbology type layer. In some cases this is okay if you're not wanting to create a colored map of your field. Um, but a lot of times you're wanting to look at different colors. So if we double click on that and we go to our symbology and the render type, we're going to change this to next one down from single band gray. 
and this is where it's going to give us the options of what um, our symbology that we want to give it. Um, defaultly, I don't remember what it gives you, but I set my precipitation that I created as my default. Um, but if you don't have this precipitation, which you shouldn't because you haven't made one yet, we'll go through how to make it right here in a second. Um, you go to all color ramps, and the closest that you'll ever get is this red, yellow, green, um, which is honestly kind of a, a really trashy color scheme. Uh, if you want to have more than five classes, we can change this to, let's change it to equal interval, and we can bump that up to, you know, however many you want to. Well, let's just do six for now, and we'll go ahead and hit apply. And I'll bring this out of the way. You can see there's our NDVI map. It's not too bad, um, but we can make a, a better color ramp or any color ramp for that matter, uh, depending on what you want to do. So let's come back in here and let's make a different color ramp. So if we click down on this and we go to edit color ramp, this is where we can actually change um, our color ramp into whatever we want it to be. Um, I know in or in ArcGIS Pro, there's a color ramp called Precipitation, and this one has worked well in the past. I think it works well because it goes from a red to a yellow, really a red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, and then dark blue. So there's a wide range of different colors in there, and they're evenly spaced well enough um, to where you can pick out very slight differences in the map. So let's go ahead and create that color ramp. So first thing we're going to do is we have one, two, three, four, five um, little tick marks here. Let's go ahead and you click on one and highlight it and then double click on it. And it should create another one. So let's go ahead and get six of them. So now you just need to evenly space these um, across uh, the color ramp. Not quite even. Pull this one back just a little bit. Okay, so that's decently even. And to create a nice precipitation-like color ramp, we're going to click up here. This is where our, typically our dark blues are at. So we can come up here and click in this dark blue region. And you can change that to whatever you want it to be, however light a blue you want. Uh, let's just leave it wherever it's at. And come here. So this is our light blue section. So click in the light blue. And come here, and this is our green section of our precipitation. So just come click on the green here. And again, you can change it up and down depending on where you want uh, your saturation and your green to be. And then you come down here, next color is yellow. So click in the yellow section. And then the next one is orange. And be careful here. Get a nice orange color. And the last one is our red color. So there we go. We have our nice um, precipitation color gradient that we're all used to. So go ahead and click OK on there. And now it, uh, it applied that new color ramp. Um, if you wanted to save this color ramp, you can come on here and save color ramp. Oop, and it came up on my other screen. And you could save this to uh, you know, whatever different name you wanted to give it. For the default one that I created, I just named it Precipitation after uh, the ArcGIS Pro one that's commonly used. Um, but now let's go ahead and see what this map looks like. So we can hit um, apply and I'll pull this out of the way and there's our nice um, new color gradation of our map. Uh, if we bring it back here, let's say you had too much blue in there, it was unevenly spaced, you can change the mode to uh, the quartile mode, click apply, slide it back over and now it's a much different looking NDVI map. Uh, much more, what I want to say, shows a lot more. And that's because of how it's breaking these colors. Um, so you can see that most of these colors are actually being broken um, 0 0.6, at 0.6 in DVI and higher. Um, so that's why we see all that variability on the field. It's not necessarily that the field is that variable, <clears throat> just that we chose a color ramp that really um, capitalized on where those NDVI values were highly concentrated in order to separate those colors out. Um, so let's go ahead and push apply, okay, and there's our nicely created NDVI map for this particular field.
Um, looks like that's all we have for this lab. Um, but yeah, if you didn't like this color ramp and you wanted a different one, you could easily go in and make whatever color ramp you wanted to. Um, in our next video, we're going to be looking at extracting mean values and doing statistical, well, we're not really going to get into statistics, but at least be able to extract um, values from a raster layer into a polygon layer so we can do math on them later on in the future. And also how to create grids on your field so you can track, um, let's say, yield over time, your soil test lev level over time, and just overall production of your field across the field. So um, with that, we will catch you on, I believe, video five. Not quite sure. Don't quote me on that.